In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a third-person character in Unreal Engine 5. This tutorial will be super straightforward, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. To start, go to the Content Browser, then right-click and create a new folder. Name this folder Inputs. Open the folder and right-click, then go to Input and add an input action. Call this IA underscore move forward. Open the input action and set the value type to Axis 1D. Save this, then reopen the content browser, right click on the input and duplicate it. Name this one IA underscore move right. These inputs will control the base directional movement of the character. Save this input and then duplicate it once again. Call it IA underscore look. Open this and set the value type to Axis 2D. This input will be used to control the third person camera. Next, right click, go to input and add an input mapping context. Call this IMC underscore base mapping. This will contain all of our player inputs. Click on the plus and select the move forward input. Then click the keyboard icon and press the W key on your keyboard to assign the input. Then assign an additional keyboard input, this time pressing S. Click the plus next to modifiers and select negate. This will allow the player to move both forwards and backwards. Next, add the move right input action by following the same steps, this time using the D and A keys. Don't forget to add the negate modifier to the A input. Next, add the look input action to the mapping context. On the select input dropdown, choose mouse and then select mouse XY 2D axis. Add a modifier to this input and select negate. Click the dropdown and disable the modifier in the X and Z axis. This allows for the camera to move as it would in a traditional third-person game. Now that all our inputs have been set up, we can move on to creating a player controller blueprint. This is responsible for controlling the pawn possessed by the player. Right-click on the contents browser and create a folder called Blueprints. Open the folder, then right-click again and select Blueprint class, then Player Controller. Name this BP underscore Base controller. Open the controller blueprint and go to the event graph. Delete the event tick. Then right click and get an enhanced input local player subsystem node. Drag off this to get an is valid node to ensure that it exists. Connect this to the event begin play. Drag off the Enhanced Input node again to get an Add Mapping Context node. Connect this, then go to the drop-down and select the Input Mapping Context we just made. Then Compile and Save. Next, we are going to create the Third Person Character Blueprint. Go to the Contents Browser, right-click and select Blueprint Class. Click Character, then name it BP underscore base character. Open the blueprint and select the skeletal mesh. Go to the skeletal mesh asset drop down and select your character mesh. Rotate the mesh to face the same direction as the arrow. Then switch to the left view and reposition the mesh so that its feet are in line with the bottom of the collision capsule. Then return back to the perspective view. With the skeletal mesh selected, click Add and search for a spring arm. Then with the spring arm selected, add a camera. Click on the spring arm and rotate it to be behind the player. Then move the spring arm up to be level with the player's chest. Go to the Details panel and enable Use Pawn Control Rotation. This setup will ensure that the character is always facing the same direction as the camera, as it would in a third-person shooter. 
If you want the character to rotate separately from the camera, you need to change two settings. In order to change these settings, click on Class Defaults, then go to the search bar and type Porn. Go down and disable Use Controller Rotation Yaw. Next, go back to the search bar and search Orient. Enable Orient Rotation to Movement. Now your character will rotate separately to the camera. Next, we are going to set up the inputs so that they can be used to control the player. First, go to the event graph, select these and delete them. Right-click, search for your look input action and add it to the graph. Right-click on the action value and click Split Structure Pin. Drag off the X value and add a controller your input. Connect this to Triggered. Next, drag off the Y value and add a controller pitch input. Connect this and add a reroute node to keep things tidy. Now, add your Move Forward input action to the graph. Drag off Triggered and search for Add Movement Input. Add it to the graph, then connect the action value to the scale value. Add a get control rotation node to the graph. Right click and split the pin structure. Then add a get forward vector node to the graph. Split the structure of this pin and connect the your values. Connect the return value to the world direction pin. Next, add the move right input action to the graph. Copy these nodes and paste them below. Connect them up and add a Get Right Vector to the graph. Split the pin structure and connect the Yaw values. Connect the Return value to the World Direction and the Action value to the Scale value. The functionality needed to control the player is now set up and is almost ready to test. Next, we will set up the Game Mode Blueprint. The game mode is responsible for telling the game which player and controller to use. To start, open up the Content Browser, right-click and create a new Blueprint class. Select Game Mode Base and name it BP underscore Base Mode. Open the Blueprint and navigate over to the right. For the Player Controller class, select BP underscore Base Controller. For the default Pawn class, select BP underscore Base Character. Compile, save and head over to the viewport. Go to Edit, then Project Settings. Click on Maps and Modes and change the default game mode to BP underscore Base Mode. Go back to the viewport and save the game. Next, go to the Add to Project drop-down and search for Player Start. Drag this into the world. Now you should be able to press play and test the functionality of your third-person character. Next, we will be adding some simple walking and idle animations to our character using an animation blueprint. Head to the content browser and create a new folder. Call it Animations. Open the folder, then right-click and go to Animations. Choose Animation Blueprint. Select the mannequin you are using, then click Create. Name it ABP underscore character. Proceed to open the blueprint and go to the event graph. Move this event out of the way. Right click and add an event begin play. Drag off the try get pawn owner return value and search cast to BP underscore base character. Then, right-click on the pin and promote it to a variable. This will store a reference to our base character. Next, 
add the variable we just made to the graph, drag off it and add an isValid node. Drag off the variable again and get the character's movement. Drag off from the character's movement to get the player's velocity. From this, get the vector length xy. Right click the return value pin and promote this to a variable. Call it speed. Connect everything up and organize the nodes. Compile and save. Then move over to the animation graph. Drag off and add a state machine. Open this, then drag off the entry to add a state. Name this idle. Open this and search for your idle animation. Drag it onto the graph and connect it to the output. Go to the right, scroll down and enable loop animation. Go back and drag off the idle state machine to add another. Call this one walking. Open it and search for your walking animation. Drag it in and connect it to the output. Again, set this animation to looping. Go back and open the transition rule. Add the player's speed variable to the graph. Drag off it and add a greater than. Connect this to the result. Go back again and drag from the walking state to the idle state. Open the transition rule. Add the speed variable again. Then drag off and add a less than or equal to. Connect this to the result. Compile and save. Then go back to the contents browser and open the base character blueprint. On the right, ensure that use animation blueprint is selected. Go to the drop down and choose ABP underscore character. Compile and save, then head back to the viewport. When you press play, you should have a fully functioning and animated third person character. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel as it helps out a lot. If you have any questions about this tutorial or suggestions on ones I should make in the future, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.